Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish my knife didn't get so hot on my 2x72 grinder? Well, today I want to put a fan cooled heat sink on my grinder platen and see what happens. This is my Ameribraid 2x72 grinder platen with a hardened steel face. And this is a heat sink I got online for a few dollars. Steve wants to tell us about it. I will show you its feature. It's made of aluminum. And it does some pretty cool stuff when you look through it. Okay, I got this blue thermal tape and two of these computer fans to round out our efforts. And now don't laugh, we'll adjust our plan in a minute. First, we gotta make sure it fits on the back of our platen, and that's gonna require a little bit of trimming. But how do attach do? Since I can't really braise the heat sink directly to the platen, I could braise it to a piece of steel, something like this, and then tack weld the steel in spots to the platen. But then I have a piece of steel and a heat sink permanently attached to my platen. I'm not ready to do that yet. The tape, um, you know it's good, but I don't know it's that good. The uh, heat thermal conductivity of aluminum is 239 in some units that I can't pronounce. The thermal conductivity of steel, like mild steel, be about 50. And the thermal conductivity of the tape is two. <laughs> Which for thermal tape is actually pretty good. Most of it's more like 1.1, 1.5 range. So. That is to say, if there's any way that I can directly contact the aluminum to the back of the platen, I should try to do it. Which is sort of why I'm thinking more and more about trying to wedge something up in here, in this space, to, to press this into here and really keep it just sort of mechanically pressed firm. I, I can't, this is hardened steel, it's not like, I, I don't want to try to tap anything into here, you know like two thirds of the way through here. I got just the idea of tapping this and bolting something to it is just not gonna work either. So that's where I'm at, let's see what happens. Yeah, well at any rate, it's sort of mounted. Now let's work up a rig for our two fans. There's not much room back here, so something like this is just gonna have to do. Let's feel the power. Oh. Yeah, I mean, all right, so the fans are going to be replaced with something stronger later, okay? So don't sweat it. So here's my laser thermometer gun thingy. I think some sort of contact thermocouple would have been nicer for this experiment, but I don't got one. So. I'm gonna spend about 30 seconds establishing everything is room temperature, including the platen. Next, I'm gonna mark off one quarter inch increments on this 4140 square bar that will grind away in roughly one minute stages, checking our temperatures in between and after. And we're gonna use a fresh 80 grit belt for each experiment. The goal here is to do a set amount of work in a set amount of time and measure the temperature of the platen and the 4140 bar. We then compare those results with and without a cooling system in place to see how it does. I got my timer out because I'm trying to grind each one quarter inch stage in one minute. So I'm watching the timer while I apply pressure. So how do we do? After the first one quarter inch or first minute of grinding on the 4140 square bar, our platen temperature was 214 degrees. After the second one quarter inch and a second minute of grinding, it went up to 250 degrees. And then we did notice that the heat tended to focus at the point of contact on the platen. It didn't really disperse up and down the platen very well. So the top of the platen was 92 degrees and where we were grinding, 250 degrees. Very interesting. Time for our fan cooling system. Let's see where it goes. Um, the fans are blowing. You can't hear them because they suck. Predictions. <laughs> 
This is sort of not a very scientifically uh, set up production here. You know, there's not a whole lot of uh, precision. So if we're going to measure a difference, it'd have to be a dramatic difference for us to say it's anything more than differences in technique or chance. And I don't think that this is going to provide a significant reduction. So we'll see. My prediction is that things are basically about the same. Now again, we're going to do the same amount of work, or try to, in the same amount of time. And uh, that's why I got the timer going. So let's get this underway. The grinder settings are identical. This is a fresh belt. Well, here we go. I'm running a two horsepower motor on my Ameribraid grinder at 75% on the VFD. I think that's around 3000 RPM. Our platen is 174, 180, 180. Let's move on to the second, uh, the second notch here. Plans at 198, 200, 214, 215, 219. So just as I was turning away, it went up to 222 degrees, which is what I'm going to use for the final results. The first one quarter inch of the bar, the first minute, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly 30 degrees lower than without the uh, cooling system. The second one quarter inch, 222 degrees Fahrenheit, also about 30 degrees lower. A small improvement, maybe maybe measurable, significant, and all that. But if it's there, I think it's because it's the the heat is dispersing through the aluminum heat sink and traveling up the platen through the heat sink, and I think that heat's just being absorbed in the system in a wider range. I'm not sure the fan is carrying away a lot of heat at this point. So let's get a bigger fan. This is my shop vac, and it's got a blower on the backside. Before we see where this goes, I want to redo our control where we grind in the middle of the platen instead of at the bottom. Let's see what happens. I don't think it'll be too different. What's interesting is that grinding in the middle of the platen yielded hotter results, about six degrees hotter for the first one quarter inch of the 4140 bar ground, and about 23 degrees hotter than the second one quarter inch. And you know, maybe there's some variability in technique and things like that, but at any rate, this establishes a new sort of control. So this is now 94 degrees, it won't get below that. 94 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. The uh, air blowing out, of the uh, vacuum is actually like about 100, 102 degrees. It feels sort of lukewarm to warm. So I, I think this whole thing now, because I blew it for about 10 minutes trying to cool it off before I figured out it was too hot. So I think the whole system now is sort of in that range. It's just going to take a long time to cool down, but we're just going to rock anyway. Um, like I said, we're not looking for small variations. We're looking for big ones. So here we go. So remember, our computer fan cooled heatsink yielded about a 30 degree improvement at a minute and two minutes. But I think we're going to need more than that to significantly impact the way that we grind. It was still pretty hot. The platen was still pretty hot. Too hot to touch. So 166, 167, 167. Wow, so that's quite a big difference. 144 degrees Fahrenheit for the first one quarter inch of the bar, the first minute, and 167 for the second one quarter inch and second minute of grinding. Compare that to the control, and you can see a 76 degree reduction in the platen temperature for the first minute and a 106 degree temperature reduction for the second minute or the second one quarter inch. Now that, that's pretty huge. But there's still a question, does that equate to more efficient grinding due to less time dunking or cooling the knife and more time on the platen, less chance of burning your steel or ruining tempers? If there is a benefit, will it persist for a longer period of grinding than just a few minutes? Here's where we're at. Here's two knives made of identical Nicholson files, both brand new out of the package. Same shape. I've tempered these down to, I try to get them to 61-ish 
60-ish. Now I'm going to grind one on the plain old platen in the middle of the platen uh, on a new belt. And then I'm going to attach our air cooler and grind the other one and we're just going to see how many times do we have to go to the quench tank? I'm going to use my bare hands. You know, how many times do we have to dunk it in water? How long does it take to grind one side of each knife under those different conditions? If I were super scientific, what we would do is we put the same amount of water at equal temperatures in my dunk tank here, my dunk bucket, and we'd measure the change in the temperature of the water after we cooled the knives after grinding in that tank. And that water would be sort of a repository of all the heat generated and transferred to the knife, which we then put in the water as sort of like a, you know, a bank. And then we check our balance at the end. I'd have to insulate the tank and, you know, the grinding times would have to be about equal. So there's not heat dissipating in the environment that we don't measure or capture. I could just use this double wall steel uh, tumbler. It keeps stuff cold forever. But, you know, is this science or is this pseudoscience? Am I trying to measure small changes or large changes that make a difference in the way I grind? I want to know if I have to go to the dunk tank as frequently or if I can keep the knife on the platen more. And that's just going to be sort of me eyeballing the tape after this is done. It's fresh out of the tap tap water, so it's whatever temperature the tap is. Over here I've marked the center of the platen roughly so I can keep it sort of in the center. This is a 80 grit belt and the temperature of our platen right now is right around 90 degrees. So we'll see how long this takes. I'll start my stopwatch. Yeah, I ran out of 80 grit belts, so we're using the belts from the first part of the experiment. They should all have the same amount of wear on them. They also did the same amount of work. So also there's blue dicum along the edge of the knife because I scribed center lines to grind too. So we're going to take the same amount off of each of the knives. All right, three minutes and 51 seconds. Platen's sort of all over the place. Max is out around 190, basically. About 194. So no cooling system. The grind time was 3 minutes and 51 seconds. Platen temp afterwards, 194 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. 18 total dunks for 43 seconds in the water, according to video review. What I just said is that the file guide I clamped the knife to grind equal plunge lines side to side won't fit with the heat sink there. It just bumps up against it. So I had to take it off which, you know, if anything, is not that big a deal. It probably means the platen and the knife are a tiny bit hotter than they otherwise would be, but probably not a big deal. All right, so that took three minutes, 35 seconds, minus 11 seconds it took to put our blower back up in place because it fell down for 11 seconds and I had to rig it back up. That brings our grinding time down to three minutes, 24 seconds, a final temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit, only 13 dunks and 26 seconds in the water. Let's compare that to the no cooler version. This was a bit faster. The final temperature of the platen was lower, less dunks and less time in water. The math on that is 27 seconds or 11.5% faster. The platen temperature was 60 degrees better or 31% cooler. There's a lot of complicated things going on here. What would happen if I wore gloves and didn't mind burning my steel? What would this look like if I had a contact thermocouple with constant readouts of the platen temperature? What would happen if I changed the way I grind? More or less time in the water. What would happen if I used different parts of the platen, especially at first? Heat didn't travel very well. You might not need a cooler for the first several minutes of grinding if you went up and down the platen. Is this going to wreak havoc with my dust collection or what? Is it more important to cool the belt or the platen? On my way out, let's give it one final try with the thermal tape instead of mechanical force joining the heat sink to the platen and just see what happens. So the tape didn't do quite as well. 36 degree hotter for the first minute of grinding and maybe 19 degrees for the second minute. I don't know if that's significant or not. 
Maybe. What a great experiment. That was a lot of fun. I, I wonder about flushing this up with the side of the platen so you can get in here with a file guide on your knife or a grinding jig or something, closing this up and having tubes running over this way so you can still take the belt on and off and then maybe, you know, air in, air out. But then in, it's all closed up. Maybe you could use water. That'd probably be more efficient. But then you have to have a pump and the water leaks. And it, I mean, I don't think anything will come of this, but it's really interesting in that the platen got a lot cooler, but it didn't mean you could necessarily keep the knife against the belt a lot longer. You know, there's much more thermal mass over here than in the knife. So even though this is getting to 130 degrees and you have some heat loss in the sparks, the knife at the smaller mass is, is probably taking on more heat than the platen. So maybe it was like 160 degrees and I just had to keep dunking it at 150 degrees. I don't know. Interesting experiment. I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.